What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techy channel, where we make Linux simple and help you navigate the wild world of tech. But today we're diving into the latest version of Endeavor OS. If you've been following the channel for a minute, you might remember that I last checked out Endeavor OS about three years ago. Since then, I've been using it on and off, especially on my laptop, when I need to get stuff done outside of my main workstation, which is Orch. Well, it all started with Enteragos. And if you guys don't remember it, Enteragos was the first Orch-based distro I ever tried. And I used this distro to actually learn how Orch actually worked. It had a simple installer, you know, you can get it set up pretty good. And I used it for over a year when Interagos was still around, but eventually it bit the dust and Endeavor's OS kind of rose from the ashes. And so that's what piqued my interest and kept me coming back because I've really enjoyed Interagos or Intagos, however y'all want to say it. But in this video, we're going to break down everything that's new in Endeavor OS. We'll start with a overview of what's been cooking, and then I'll give you my thoughts on how it stacks up against other distros. So if you're curious about what's new with this Orch based distro, you're in the right place. So let's jump right in. All right, so I'm at EndeavorOS.com. And of course I had a link down in the description of the video. That way you guys can go right over there and check it out for yourself. But if we click right here on the main page, this will take you to the release article for the latest version of Endeavor OS. And so let's hit read more and this will break down everything that happened with that latest release. Now we all know it's Orch based, so that means that it's a rolling release. But first off, I want to point out that Endeavor OS just celebrated its fifth year anniversary. And like I said, it's been five years since these former Interagos moderators decided to roll up their sleeves and create something out of nothing. And they had no experience, kind of like when you decide to build your own PC for the first time and realize that the CPU doesn't just magically install itself, but somehow they pulled it off. And here we are five years later with a distro that's become a fan favorite. Now, one of the coolest updates in this release is the return of ARM support. If you're one of those guys that like tinkering with singer board computers like a Raspberry Pi, this is where things get interesting. The ARM project has been on hiatus for a bit, but like I said, it's back and they've made it even easier to set up. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit, but you've got dedicated images for devices like the Raspberry Pi 4B, the 5B, the Odroid N2, and even the Pinebook Pro, which I thought was interesting. Just download the image, slap it on your storage device, and you're good to go. And one other thing I saw, they even have a headless server option for the Pi, which is perfect for those of you that like to set up a device with no monitor and keyboard and only manage it via SSH or something like that. Now, let me scroll down a little bit so we can talk about the desktop environment. And with this last release, it comes with Plasma 6.1. It's now the default for both the live environment and the offline install option. And if you've been rocking KDE Plasma, you'll appreciate this update because it's smooth, it's polished, and honestly, it just feels right. And they've also rolled out updates to the Calamaris installer, as well as Firefox. And then of course they also have an updated Linux kernel, which is cool. And hey, they even squashed a bug that used to crash the installer when you deselect the Endeavor's OS apps. And this happened to me, uh, I would say last year sometime when I checked out Endeavor OS, but shout out to them, you know, for actually fixing that or whatever. And as always, Endeavor is, is keeping its roots strong with a focus on community involvement. The community is what makes this distro stand out. So shout out to all the Endeavor's community out there and they really come together to make this release happen. So big ups to the team and the community for making this thing what it is. So let's go down and check out the operating system or I'll walk you guys through the install. But before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. First, let me show you guys how to download it right fast. So if we go up here to the top, you can click download. They'll take you to the download page and you have a couple different options to download Endeavor OS. You got your magnet links, you got your torrent link, and also you got your SHA-SUM 512 to check the OS file after downloading it just to verify that it came from the correct source. And then you got your download mirrors down here at the bottom. They have 
a spot where you can download the ISO image depending on what country you're in. So Europe, Asia, North America, you're good to go. You can download it. As well as the SHA-512 sum and the GPG signature file. You can download that as well. Now, one thing I noticed, the other page over here, Endeavor's ORM. So you can go into here and get your installation for Endeavor OS, you know, ORM installation. So here's the images, if you click there, go down, they'll show you all the images down here. So you got your Raspberry Pi B, 5B, Ojoy, Pinebook Pro, Headless Server. This is what I was talking about earlier how they have a headless version for you guys. So you can download that as well. Just slap it on, you know, the storage device and you're good to go. Now let's hop over. I already have the ISO downloaded so we can run through the install and I can show you guys Endeavor. All right, so I'm booting into the live ISO. So it pops up with the welcome screen. And as you can see, you got a whole bunch of options here. Don't be intimidated by it. It's super simple to understand. You can start the installer, update the mirrors, update. And this is reflector simpler. And then this is another one where it rates the mirrors and put them in order. And then you can update the mirrors from Endeavor SOS. You can partition your drives. You can make changes there. You can change the display resolution if you need to. And this is all within just the installer. And it'll show this welcome screen as soon as you install the operating system as well. It'll pop up with this as well. But you got a lot of information here. Bluetooth notes, latest release information, installation tips. You know, a lot of great information that is here. And you can click here on this other tab and there's general information. It'll take you to the website, take you to the forum, you know, about the welcome screen, the wiki, the news, you know, and also you can donate to this open source project, which I always recommend. But let's go do the installer right fast. So just click start installer and that'll bring it up for you. You can go the online installer or the offline installer. Like I said, both of them use the KDE desktop. We'll just do the online. That way everything is up to date when we install it, which I recommend you guys do. You connect it to some internet and run through the installer. It'll start up with the super simple Calamoris installer. And I always talk about this, you know, when I'm going through it, it's, this is a very simple installer. For anybody that's new, this makes it easier for new people to get into Linux or Orch. And that's what really drove me to actually try out Endeavor's OS because of Interagos. Like I said, that was my entry point into Orch. I had always used like Ubuntu throughout learning Linux, which is why I do a lot of Ubuntu videos. But this introduced me to Orch. And then eventually I got to the point where I was comfortable enough to install Orch on my main system. So this was that entry point or it's based on that entry point now let's go down start off so american english so just select your language hit next uh, your location it already picked up my location i'm on the west coast of the u.s here we go so keyboard layout boom i'm gonna use defaults english hit next desktop you can select whatever desktop you want we're gonna go with the flagship of plasma which is already you see you see it right here it's already got plasma up on this live iso but i'll just go to install it since it's the flagship but let's go on hit next there and here's some extra packages you can go through here and like I said, when I showed you guys this in the past, it broke down everything that was available to you as far as all the things you can install. That's one thing I like about this distro and the way they have the installer set up. You can install pretty much any and everything that you need. And then by you selecting that desktop environment, it selects certain software as well, like recommended applications, the base software for the operating system or the desktop environment. And then as well as the Endeavor applications that they recommend. You have a lot of options in here. You can go in and dis deselect things. I'm not going to go through everything because I want you guys to explore for yourself. So let's hit next there. The bootloader. So Grub. We're going to use Grub. You also had an option to select no bootloader in case you want to put something on there. You want to have your own option to install something. And that's one thing about the Linux operating system that I love. You have so many options. You could build this system however you want to. So. All right, let's go ahead and select our drive. We're gonna erase the drive. You can add swap if you need to. We're not gonna add swap, it's fine. We don't need to. You can do a manual partition. This allows you to break it up however you want to. Some people like to put their home directory on a different partition and encrypt it and all that stuff. So you can encrypt the full system if you want to right here. And then you make your selection of where you want the master boot record to be, which will be on a def default device. So let's go down here next there. We got everything selected we need. Let's go down and create our user account. I'm just create something, you know, Josh. And then we're gonna name this EOS. And then let's go on and type in a super strong password and type it in twice, boom. And then I never select log on automatically without asking for the password. That's something you should do whenever you boot up the system it won't just go on and log right into the system and people have access to whatever you have on your desktop environment, especially if it's like encrypted, you know what I'm saying? You definitely don't want that. So log in without that, use the same password for the administrator account, that's fine, hit next. And here is our summary. This breaks down everything that it's going to do. It's going to install Grub. It's going to install the operating system, all those options that we made, keyboard layout, all that good stuff. So we can hit install there. 
and I'll be back when it finishes. All right, so our installation is complete. That was pretty fast, right? No, I'm just joking. It took me a minute. I'll say about 10 minutes or so for it to install, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It installed everything we wanted. So all we had to do is click that button. We can restore it now, or we can continue playing with the system. And you guys have seen the system from the live ISO, so I'm gonna just skip ahead and I'll be back when it comes back up. Now, this is something I wanted to show you guys. We're in the live ISO, and actually let me fix the display right fast so you guys can see it a little bit better, at least across the screen. But this is mainly what I wanted to show you. It says after install task. So you got a couple options in here. You can update your mirrors. You can update the system. So EOS update AUR. You can update the system. Like I said, the mirrors, package cleanup configuration. And that's one cool thing about it. It already has the AUR installed, so you get to go. You don't really have to worry about that. You can update your default wallpaper, change desktop resolution, which I just did without looking here and knowing that it was there. Software news, you know, just all the same. Uh, a couple of the other information that you've seen when we went through the install. I just wanted to at least show them to you guys. And that's a weird little bug. You see how it's going big with my mouse, but let's click under here so you can see everything else. So you got your assistant. These are tools for useful for daily tasks. You got your tips, package management, you know, all the information, firewall information, hardware networking, MV users. So that's good to see. I think it's because my system might be freezing up. Let's go down and close this out. You know, you can click the button that says don't show me more, but this will pop up every single time unless you click that button, it won't show up anymore, but you can go look for the welcome screen under the start menu. Now, I won't go through the system like I typically do where I go through and talk about or show you guys all the different software. I'm gonna just talk about my thoughts on the actual update. And first off, I got to say, you know, OS continues to impress me. Ever since Intera Ghost went away, I was bummed to be honest, man. But I really didn't know it went away because I had already moved on to Arch. I had already migrated over to Arch. So, but I went back to check it out because, you know, I was always interested in it. I mean, it was an awesome distro, at least for my first time playing around with an Arch-based system. And when I saw that it was going away or it went away, I was really bummed, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, Endeavor OS, it kind of picked up the pieces. And like I said, they've managed to keep that Arch experience intact while making it approachable for folks who don't want to spend their entire weekend configuring that system. And trust me, I've done that with Arch. I've printed out the Arch install, like a couple of the pages when I didn't have another system to look at the instructions. Uh, and this was before they even added it as an option to open it up within the installer, but it's all command line, you know what I'm saying? But I had everything printed out and I was stuck trying to get this thing installed, get my system installed back to where it needs to be. I'm telling you that Arch install is, especially when you're first starting out and you're not too familiar with the way the operating system works, it can be difficult, but this is an option to alleviate that. Now, one other thing, Plasma 6, like I said, that's a solid addition. You know, it's sleek, it's fast, and honestly, it feels like a natural choice for this release. So if you're into KDE, you're going to love it. I definitely want to recommend it to you guys. And if you're not into KDE, well, maybe this version will change your mind on the KDE desktop. I'm still warming up to it. Let me say that because you guys know I'm an XFCE user all day. But also, if you don't want to use KDE, you know what I'm saying? You got those options, as you see in the installer, to install other desktop environments. And then also the return of ARM support is another win in my book for this release. So seeing Endeavor OS bring back, that is exciting. And the fact that you've made the install process so much simpler, it's just icing on the cake. So overall, I'm really happy with this release. It's stable, it's user-friendly, at least by art standards. And it's got a community behind it that's passionate about making it better. And if you're looking for a Arch-based distro that won't make you want to pull your hair out, like I said in the beginning, Endeavor OS is definitely worth checking out. All right, folks, so that's my deep dive into the latest version of Endeavor OS. And I know I've been saying throughout this video, Endeavorous, uh, I don't know, I just got that stuck in my head, but it's Endeavor OS. So don't beat me up too much in the comments or the thumbs down, you know what I'm saying, by me saying Endeavorous, but it's all good, whatever. I, I don't think the developers will have an issue with it because I'm pushing people to try it. I want to see people try it. But if you've been on the fence about giving it a shot, I hope this video gives you the push you need to jump in. I'm telling you, it's a solid distro with a lot to offer. And the updates in this release really show that the team and the community are dedicated to making it even better. And as always, if you find this video helpful or at least mildly entertaining, go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to the Keep It Techie channel for more Linux content. And hey, if you got any thoughts or questions about Endeavor OS, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I love hearing from you all and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay exploring, stay learning, and of course, keep it tech. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because 
yeah a lot of people get into the you know tech field because you can make a good amount of money the money is the motivator but you also in my opinion in order for you to be happy you gotta like what you're doing you know what i'm saying and so like for me a lot of times it doesn't feel like work bro most times it really doesn't feel like work it's it's yeah i'm doing something fun i'm doing something i love to do you know what i'm saying so that's what makes it you know great for me